The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. I'm Karen, and today we're going to learn about a very useful IC, the 555 timer. The 555 timer is one of the most popular ICs to use in hobby circuits. It's easy to find schematics that show any one of the numerous ways to use the 555. But to better understand how they work in circuits, I want to talk about what's happening inside the 555. The 555 timer is a switching circuit contained in an 8-pin IC that can act as a timer, oscillator, or flip-flop. Let's take a look at those 8 pins. As usual, we can find pin 1 to the left of the notch or dot on the surface of the chip. Pin 1 is for ground, 2 is the trigger, 3 the output, 4 reset, 5 control voltage, 6 threshold, 7 discharge, and 8 for connecting to VCC. We can look at what's inside the 555 to explore what all those pins do. The 555 is made up of resistors and transistors, but those can be broken up into various main components. Here's a block diagram of those components inside the 555. There are two comparators, a flip-flop, an inverter, two transistors, and a voltage divider. Looking closer at the voltage divider, you can see that it is made of three 5 kilo ohm resistors. Some believe this is where the 555 gets its name. The voltage divider is connected to power and ground, dividing the supply voltage and feeding the two comparators. Since the resistors are all the same value, the supply voltage, or VCC, is divided, with the input of comparator 1 getting two-thirds supply voltage and the input of comparator 2 getting one-third supply voltage. While the supply voltage range is typically 4.5 to 16 volts, VCC is usually between 5 and 15 volts. Let's say our circuit is running on a 9 volt battery, therefore VCC is 9 volts. From the voltage divider, the negative input of comparator 1 would be 2 thirds of that, 6 volts, while the positive input of comparator 2 would be 1 third of that, 3 volts. The positive second input of comparator 1 goes to pin 6, the threshold and the negative second input of comparator 2 goes to pin 2, the trigger. A comparator is a device that compares the voltages at its inputs and outputs a digital signal indicating which of its inputs is larger. If the positive input is larger, the output is high. If the negative input is larger, the output is low. Let's take a look at comparator 1. The positive input is connected to pin 6, threshold, and the negative input is connected to the voltage divider. With 9 volts VCC, the negative input has 6 volts. While the negative input at 6 volts is larger, the comparator will output low. But if the voltage at pin 6 is larger, above 6 volts, the comparator will output high. If pin 6 ever drops below 6 volts, making the negative input larger, the comparator output would revert back to low. Now let's take a look at comparator 2. On this comparator, the positive input is connected to the voltage divider, getting one third of VCC. So with 9 volts VCC, that makes the input 3 volts. The negative input goes to pin 2, the trigger. If the voltage at that pin is below 3 volts, the output goes high. If pin 2 goes above 3 volts, becoming the larger input, the output would go low. And again, as soon as pin 2 drops below 3 volts, the output will revert to high. The outputs of the comparators go to the two inputs of the flip-flop. In a previous episode, I covered how SR flip-flops work, but I'll recap that for you real quick. The flip-flop has two inputs, set and reset, marked by S and R, and two outputs, Q and not Q. Not Q is always the inverse of Q. This SR flip-flop is active high. The set input sets the output high, while the reset input resets the output back to low. When set goes high, output Q goes high, with not Q being the inverse. If both inputs are low, the outputs don't change. When reset goes high, output Q goes low, with not Q being the inverse. While flip-flops typically have two outputs, in the 555 timer, only output not Q is used. Let's look at our comparators in action and how they set and reset the flip-flop. VCC is still 9 volts. Pin 6 needs to be lower than 6 volts for comparator 1 to output low. When pin 2 is lower than 3 volts, comparator 2 outputs high. This sets the flip-flop, and not Q outputs low. 
The trigger at pin 2 acts like a starter pistol, starting the timer, setting the flip-flop. But in order to get more than one tick of the timer, the flip-flop needs to first be reset. First, the voltage at pin 2 must go higher than 3 volts, so that comparator 2 outputs low. Then, when pin 6 goes higher than 6 volts, comparator 1 outputs high. This resets the flip-flop and not Q goes high. We learned in the flip-flop episode that we never want both inputs S and R to go high at the same time. When that happens, the outputs begin to behave unpredictably. So we never want pin 6 to go high and pin 2 to go low, causing both comparators to output high at the same time. This state is considered invalid. So now the flip-flop is outputting a digital signal, high or low, and this goes to the output pin of the 555 timer. First, the signal passes through an inverter, then out to pin 3. This effectively outputs what would be the signal from output Q of the flip-flop. That covers the path of the signal from input to output, but we still have three pins to cover. Pin 5 is control voltage. It connects to the negative input of comparator 1. Typically, this input has a voltage that's 2 thirds VCC, but pin 5 can be used to adjust or control that voltage. In some use cases, it's ideal to have an easy way to reset the circuit. So we have pin 4. Pin 4 is connected to the base of a transistor. This transistor must be on for the 555 to function, so pin 4 is usually connected to VCC to hold it high. If pin 4 is ever grounded, going low, the transistor is turned off. This triggers the reset and the 555 output goes low. Last is pin 7, discharge. It's used with external capacitors that are integral in setting the duration of the timer. In the 555, pin 7 is connected to another transistor whose base is controlled by the flip-flop output. When the 555 output is high, not Q is low, so the transistor is off. This usually causes the capacitor to charge up and eventually triggers the reset. When the circuit is reset, the transistor turns on, which connects the capacitor to ground, allowing it to quickly discharge. I've covered how the 555 timer works internally, but to fully understand how some of the pins function, they need to be seen working in a circuit. So in a future episode, I'm gonna talk about how the 555 timer can be used in various types of circuits and modes, like A-stable, mono-stable, and bi-stable. If you have any questions about what we learned today, you can get help by posting to the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.